Thank you. Hello, everybody. Tom Matuska here with Brett Wingfield and the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. Um, and we have our camera lady is back for a special um, visitation. Uh, <laughs> Joss and Mandy Swart. And uh, we are going to talk today about airbrushes. And uh, airbrushes is something that everybody leaves till the last minute and with the world show coming up and all this is show season and it all starts with your state shows and kind of leads into the world show the big one and the last thing you want to have happen is work on your prize entry um, a day or two before and find out that you're, there's something wrong with your airbrush either your needle is bent or or uh, your nozzle is is uh, busted out or your compressor doesn't work, which happens. Um, so you wanna make sure that everything is in working order before we get to there. I don't think these guys procrastinate as much as we do. We procrastinate quite a bit. Um, more than once I've been painting a fish at three in the morning uh, before we go to the show. And I remember you one time, uh, we had to rent a compressor at the show. At the show. And um, yeah, you painted a smallmouth bass. In your room, I think. Um, so, yeah. uh, so anyway, you want to be ahead of the game and have your equipment in, in good working order. And uh, we have a whole array of um, airbrushes laid out here. And we're kind of fortunate with the supply company and uh, different vendors give us different airbrushes to try. So we get to try a lot of different um, brushes and we kind of have our favorites and we kind of have our workhorses. And um, some we use a little bit more than others. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you like here? Me? Um, well, we've had a chance to use them all. And I think having come through class, we all started with that one. I love that airbrush. Pache H. Probably still painted more fish than I bet it has. Yeah. It's a single action airbrush. Uh, very simple to use. It's got really two uh, main working color adjusting parts. They're, it's as simple as it gets. Um, I don't think I could do tax when you work without this airbrush. I love my real precise airbrushes, but uh, this one, like you said, is painted more um, than yeah. most all others combined. Easy to clean, easy to maintain, um, just two simple moving parts. Yeah. Um, and when we, when we have a like three students painting at one at one time, we'll have four eight airbrushes on one side of them, four on another, so they have, at their fingertips, they have eight airbrushes. They don't have to change colors. They can pick up the white, they can pick up the orange, they can pick up the um, green um, without having to wash out a cup or anything like that. So that airbrush has been around, oh man, um, I've been in this business for 40 some years, and that and the BL have been um, a mainstay of the Pache Airbrush Company forever and um, still are used extensively yeah. today. Ours are right back here? Yeah, we got a lot of them. Um, too many to keep clean. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, after, so this is a single action airbrush. Do we want to talk to them about it? Sure, sure, sure. Single action, um, single action meaning um, you have one function with the trigger. Trigger is air only, yep. um, and you would have to manually adjust the amount of paint. Um, the other version would be a double action. Double action, that's like this. You push down for air, you pull back for the amount of paint that you want. Now, every double action airbrush is a little bit different. The Pache airbrush has a little roller, a little roller wheel in the front, and that pulls your trigger back as far as you want it for the amount of um, paint that you want to come out. So you roll that wheel until the trigger is back there all by itself, push down, you get that amount of paint. If it's too much, you roll that wheel back, the trigger is now coming back, you push down and you get less paint. So that has an option, you can use it almost like a single action. Sure, yeah. all you're doing is pushing down for paint because you've already adjusted that. Yeah. Or you can freehand it and you can push down and pull back to whatever amount of paint you want. So that's, that's Pache's version of uh, double action airbrush. Very, very good 
working airbrush. Um, you know, we like it. Um, another one is the Talon, and that's a uh, that's a nice airbrush. Um, this is another Pache that's double action airbrush. Um, a little bigger color cup. Mm -hmm. um, this this would be a gravity feed airbrush. Um, the ones that you saw previously are siphon feed, so they would have a bottle coming down from the bottom. This would be a gravity feed where you put the, the paint would feed up from the top or feed down from mm -hmm. the top. And we have uh, uh, badger airbrushes. We have a array of badger airbrushes also. It's another fine airbrush. Um, all of our badger airbrushes, I think, are double action airbrushes. Yeah. Um, and that would be, let's see, no, and this is the Raptor, isn't it? This is the Pache Raptor. Um, but we have uh, badger airbrushes that are very similar to this. Push down, pull back. Yeah. That's uh, Now when it comes to the Pache airbrushes, um, notice the difference. These are both gravity feed, small color cup, doesn't bother you when you're painting. This is a little bit smaller airbrush, which I like. Um, this is a little bit heavier, bulkier airbrush. Um, holds more paint. Um, this, these paint exceptionally well. It's a little big for my feel. I like the smaller airbrushes. Now, are you guys gonna clean today an airbrush? Oh, we're gonna do so much Man. stuff today. They're gonna have to stick around and watch. So because... somebody tag Mark Drexler because this is per his request, airbrush oh. cleaning. So Mark oh, Drexler, wow. pay attention. This is for you. <laughs> wow, we're taking special requests mm -hmm. now. <laughs> Holy smoke. We'll run through some of these other airbrushes and then uh, um, we'll get into some of that stuff that you might wanna, wanna watch and learn from. Uh, Daiwata, we like Daiwata brand of airbrushes also. They're, they're a precise airbrush. Um, we have uh, one single action. Their single action version is a little bit different than the Pache. You push down for air, but you adjust the amount of paint by this little ribbed wheel back here, which by turning it um, counterclockwise, you get more paint. It pulls the needle out of the cone. By tightening it down, you get less paint and you can get a nice fine line. That's their single action. S-A-R? S-A-R, single action R. Revolution. Um, all these acronyms, that's what that's <laughs> called. Uh, this, is, um, this is a uh, very inexpensive airbrush that anybody wants to get into airbrushing. Um, it's Iwata's uh, Neo, and I think this is still in the $30 range maybe, possibly low 40s. But, uh, oh, Randy's gonna look it up. <laughs> fact check, fact check. Uh, this is a, this is a uh, double action airbrush. 63.95. How much? 63.95. Oh man, I wasn't even close. Used to be 30 it's a good in the old days. I feel like those are the Pache or the less expensive. Those are too, yeah. Uh, push down for air, pull back for paint. Yep. Um, ceramics people, uh, people that don't wanna invest a lot in an in an airbrush but want a nice quality um, double action airbrush, the Neo is a nice airbrush. It, it'll it'll handle, wa handle waters, it'll handle um, lacquer paints. Yeah. And it has, um, uh, comes with different color cups, doesn't it? Yes. Different size color cups? Tell them about that. That's not, um, your, that's not your favorite. You get to tell about the good one too. No. Um, this is actually the first Iwata airbrush that I owned. Um, mm -hmm. Was an HP, which is, um, High precision. High precision, is that right? Mm -hmm. More acronyms. HPC. Um, this is a little bit larger cup. It, I believe it's got a 23, the needle size is uh, 0.23. It's a little bit bigger, you wouldn't know it. It is a very, very nice airbrush. Does a, anything you could ask in the taxidermy shop with a very fine detail. Um, and, we'll and it comes with a lid, and if you've ever oh, yeah. dumped your your color cup on a fish mm -hmm. or something, you'll be glad that you have the lid. Yes. Some of them don't yes, accommodate lids. Um, but this is a really, this is a great airbrush. Um, and from that, we have the B. Um, they also make an A, and A does not have a color cup. It's very, very little. Um, the B is the next size cup size. The next one up is the C cup. So you got an A, B cup, C cup. And- I'm gonna uh, tell them how to remember that. 
<laughs> no? And, uh, but the B is a small, precise little cup. You're only gonna put in a few drops. It's good for detail work on fish or eyelids on mammals or noses where you're not gonna have a lot of volume of paint. Um, the B is slightly more precise than the C, but like Brett said, um, you can hardly tell, and I mean, in the hands of a good airbrush artist, you won't be able to tell that one from that one, I don't think. Um, that's kind of become the workhorse in the shop here. Seems like that's the one we go to. And this is the moment you've been waiting no, for. No, that one's yours, you should tell them. Okay, um, this is a custom micron, and the only reason I have a custom micron is Brett had a custom micron, <laughs> and so I had to have one too. And this is a very expensive piece of equipment. Um, you'll want to take really good care of it. I've already had to rebuild my tips from dropping it. Um, and you can actually tell the difference between this and the, um, the lower price models. Yeah. Um, this one has a precision air control, a little pack valve down here where you can adjust your air pressure. You don't have to go back to the compressor to adjust this. Um, this will do a finer line than I'm capable of seeing. Yeah. Um, these are a nice little airbrush. Um, a couple other little features about that one, it's got the moisture trap on the bottom. Oh yeah. And... Moisture trap, and you can get this for any airbrush too, the little mm -hmm. moisture trap, which is kind of nice. It'll drain itself. You can just push that little plunger here and it'll drain any moisture out. Um, and can I show them? You bet. For those that read their directions, <laughs> Mike Orthaber, um, if you take your crown cap off, you will get yelled at because you'll probably lose it and then you'll probably bend the needle, but can't keep you from bending the needle, but you can screw your little crown cap right to the back of the handle and then you don't lose it like that. Somebody had to teach me to read directions for that's that too. That's pretty fancy. <laughs> I think that's cool because my micron doesn't have that and I have lost the crown cap. <laughs> um, but no, these are, these are an amazing airbrush. They are, Tom said, uh, more capable of doing things than I think. I only reason. cleaned one I side think. of that for the camera. I see <laughs> oh, you know this. Um, um, and then, that's kind of our, our go-to airbrushes, I think. Mm -hmm. um, People come out with new, new styles, new versions every year that we try, but they're all basically derived off of these, these same type of an airbrushes. Um, we like also the hoses that have, I do anyway, the hoses that have a quick disconnect, and that would be like this. You've got one on that. Um, you take your airbrush, say, you're, say you wanna use the C, but you wanna have another airbrush for another reason. Um, and you snap it right on. It's just like a big um, connector that you would use on, you know, large air hose in your shop. Squeeze it, disconnect, pull down the collar, reconnect, reconnect. Like that. Um, and that's pretty handy. I can take that off. I can put my H on. Um, they're all interchangeable. You'll get a different little collar nipple like this for whichever airbrush brand that you're using. Yeah. And we have one a step up from that. Do you have the I do. air control? Yeah. This one has a, they call it a pack valve, and this is a snap ring, quick disconnect that goes on any of your airbrushes, and then the pack valve um, is a Badger product called a precision air control, and you can tighten that down to cut your air supply down, yeah. so you're painting with just a little bit of pressure or you can open it up and use a lot of pressure. So we like that feature on these yeah, hoses too. These are Badger hoses. Badger makes a great hose. Okay. Should we clean one? I think we should. I think that's what they've been dying to see. Um, mine's kind of dirty. I got a whole box full of dirty ones. Why don't we um, hook me up some air here? So anytime you're getting ready to, especially we kind of titled this getting your airbrush ready for the big show. Um, anytime you're getting ready to uh, turn me off. 
do any precise paint work, the first thing you want to know is um, you want to make dirty. sure that you are your equipment is clean, um, your paint is clean, all pieces and parts are ready to go. Um, and that, so that's what we'll do. This is a bee. This is one that's been in the shop. Um, we use it every day. It probably hasn't been cleaned in the last several days. So show um, them what to do. So there are only a few moving parts with this. We're going to take the handle off the back and that is, that's the governor handle. Um, and that is gonna expose this little knob right here, which is holding on to the needle. This is what holds the needle in place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull the needle out. So by loosening the knob, I'm gonna leave, the, I'm gonna leave that little knurled knob um, on the threaded part of this back here. And I'm gonna pull that needle out. And if you can see super close, there's a little bit of a lint on the end of that needle. There's also paint, dry paint on the needle. And that's what we're gonna clean up. Um, that is primarily as far as you would have to take this apart. If there were, if there are other issues, you can take the protective cap off the front, which will expose the fluid nozzle. You can see this one has a whole bunch of paint um, dried around the edge of it. And that paint will continue to gather more paint as, the air, as you continue to airbrush. And eventually if you're getting any spitting or if, you're getting, if your airbrush isn't acting up the way you want it to, it's one of the first things to check is does this little barrel have paint filled up? And for this one, yes, it does. Um, the next piece of this, and all of these, this is, you want to tell them about um, all of these little neural knobs and taking care of them. The neural knob. Oh, these little, where we're taking things apart here. <laughs> that Don't we get them. some of in, we get some of these in and it looks oh, like they yes. took them apart. With yes, a, yes. Now I get your drift snowflake. <laughs> um, okay. First thing I'm going to do is, since he's doing that, I'm going to take one of those little neural knobs, neural knobs, and I just have a little paper cup with um, lacquer thinner. And since Brett said um, it's got paint buildup on it, I'm just going to stick it right into the, into um, a little bit of lacquer thinner. Um, I'll show a few more things that come apart here. We're going to get this one all in pieces. Is that okay? Sure. You bet. I think I can put it back together. While I'm not sure. While you're doing that, another thing I like to do is take uh, um, really fine steel wool, four aught steel wool, and run that needle through the steel wool, and that should take <laughs> off. Hey guys, how's it going? That should you do it. I flipped the, the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That should take off all of your paint. If you need lacquer thinner on it, you can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now, incidentally, we're kind of dealing with lacquer products here, yes. correct? Yes, we are. Um, we, we like lacquers. So, so if, uh, if what? you can see that here, water I'm going to take oh. a little, one more step here. I'm going to take the back out of this, and sometimes you'll find that um, you've got paint that's back flowed in into the, into the back portion and your trigger gets sticky. So I'll take all of these pieces and parts out to the trigger assembly. And then this little piece here, probably should have looked up all my fancy names for this stuff, but I did not. Let's see if I can get that out of there. It doesn't want to come out. And that is because it's dirty. Now, the first time you take apart an airbrush that you've paid a lot of money for um, and you can't get it back together, you're going to get really scared. And you're going to go, oh no, what did I do? Now, while you're doing that, I'm just going to clean up. I put that, that tip in the paper cup and paint just filled up the bottom of the paper cup. Now, something I think we talked about this um, not too long ago that you taught me was I always clean my tips and parts with Q-tips and uh, 
I got them clogged up to where I couldn't get them unclogged. And um, you would work on them when I'm ready to get a new tip. And you would find little lint cotton fibers down in there. And those cotton fibers um, won't let that needle go through. Yeah. Um, so, um, Q -tip. so, yes. So what um, I've switched to that I think is a big help is a good quality Taclon little filbert brush or small little brush that you can clean your parts with. And you won't have to worry about getting cotton fibers clogged in there. Borrow that little brush? A uh, little brush. A little Taquan brush. So I've taken out the trigger assembly, and this piece actually, if you take out the trigger, if this little plunger here or flipper, um, if Pick it were to. Yeah. Flipper? <laughs> flipper, <laughs> cheeky my thing. Um, if that were to go forward, which it's not, I'm kind of fighting it here. Um, this piece will also back out as well. And what I was, what I want to show you, I'm just going to pull it to the back. But right down inside here is the plunger, and that you can get paint down through here, and that caused that plunger to stick. And we've cleaned up several airbrushes for people that have had that problem, and you can see. And you have from lacquer this brush, thinner on your brush. I do. There's a little thinner um, that I had squirt in the back of the, in the back of the airbrush and now I'm just trying to clean that up in there just a little bit. Um, that will also, if I were to unscrew it here, I can take out the spring and the plunger, which you can see right there. Um, I'm not going to do that because that little piece that the retaining ring that holds that in place is very hard to see when you drop it. I've dropped one before and it's hard to find. So um, that's probably as far as you would need to clean that. If you want to, you can take this piece here out. And then we like to use um, Super Lube. It's an I Iwata product. Um, Iwata Lube a, now. Oh, Iwata Lube. Lube. Mm -hmm. um, um, there was a little bit of problem with this when it was blue. Um, the blue formula thickened and we heard some people kind of complain um, about it. Now that it's gone to this clear, it doesn't seem to thicken, um, and it works fantastic. Put it on all your parts. Put it on your springs, put it on your trigger, um, put it on your quick disconnect. If you get it in, your, in line of your paint, um, it will blow through your lacquer paint or lacquer thinner, or, or even your water will um, feed it right through the airbrush and it won't cause you any difficulties later. I'm going to just, all these parts that we've taken off, I'm just gonna clean them up quickly with a towel and some lacquer thinner. While I do that, do you wanna show them anything? Nope, you keep going. Oh. <laughs> I will uh, lube up some of you. I even put it on yeah. the barrel. Yeah, um, any threaded parts um, really helps. Keep also, if you want to show them with some how to use pliers to get this front, we'll mm -hmm. show them what the blue and nozzle is. This one. Um, do you want? Oh, remember we're going to tell them not to use pliers. Yeah. Um, what were we going to use? Some of the most we're going to use that. Our airbrush tweezers airbrush that we don't tweezers. sell anymore. Um, and that has. So this is a common place for paint to dry, and it gets very difficult to take this cap off. Behind this is the fluid nozzle, and it's basically just the cone. And if you're having problems with your airbrush spitting, if you check the cap and it's and that's clean, and you're still having problems, there's a chance that you have damaged the fluid nozzle, which is the cone assembly, and that cone, if it gets even the finest hairline crack in it, um, it will it will start to um, you'll experience difficulties with the airbrush. It can if it's split, it will dry in the tip. Sure. It will catch. Um, it will paint will gather there, and you'll have leaking air around it. So that's that's a bad deal. 
Jig and Jim says, I have a Pache airbrush that the plunger is very slow to come up. Is there a lubricant that can be used to treat this? I would use so this. Um, and the Super Lube, also known as Zywata Lube. I'm not sure what you've been using, paints or waters, or I mean lacquers but, or waters, but if it's water, it, it, you might not get it you know, up very well. I'm stuck there. <laughs> um, but uh, so you might want to use some kind of a solvent on it first. Now the reason I'm using a paper towel, there we go, uh, is because we get, and we do it ourselves, we get in a hurry, use the pliers on these precise parts and you really gum them up kind of bad. Um, Showing how small that little screw is. Now in here, I don't know if you can zoom in on that. But you have the, to lift it up to her. The tip, the tip is so little, it's like three grains of salt. And when you drop it on the floor, you're never gonna find it. Yeah. And the end of this needle protrudes through that, that cone right there, through the hole. And if that cone has any damage, or the needle has any damage, um, which will eventually damage the cone, um, that's an area to inspect. So when we're, when we're going through an airbrush for someone, we generally would recommend using magnification. Now you used to, yeah, good idea. Uh, you used to carry a really nice little nylon pliers, and I thought it came in a set to take these airbrushes apart. A little nylon is plastic pliers, so you didn't dent up all the tips and everything. I haven't seen that lately. Is it in that little set? I can go grab one and look. Um, oh, and that's thick. I feel like it was metal that we carried. Um, it was a little plastic. Um, Not these. Nope, nope. It was in one of those kits, and it was a little uh, plastic pliers, like uh, little pliers, but it had plastic jaws, nylon strong, nylon jaws. Um, when we get, not important, that's okay. Um, when we uh, get airbrushes in, um, I had one in last week, and the person said, it's brand new out of the box. I took it out of the box, and it doesn't work. And so I told Teresa, I said, tell them to send it in. If it came brand new out of the box and it doesn't work, we'll replace it. The company will replace it, you know, or maybe it's something we can fix real easy. When it was a um, H airbrush like this, when I got it out of, out of his package, I looked at it and this was all dented up with the pliers. I mean, it was really, really in bad shape. Um, the set screw here was stripped out. You know, and that's pretty common. People send us these airbrushes and um, we'll fix them. I mean, that's not our, we're typically not an airbrush service right. station. I better be careful there. Um, but uh, a lot of that stuff is easily fixable. And, um, but don't use harsh tools on it. Don't, you notice I used a paper towel. Um, you know, don't use big yeah. pliers and vice grips and that sort of thing. So I'll start putting this one back together. Um, Tom had, has put the cap back over, covered the fluid nozzle here. Also put on the protective cap on the front. Those have both been cleaned and there's uh, high water lube on the threads. Mm -hmm. um, so those are back together. We still have this piece in place. So the next one, we need to make sure that the, oops, the trigger assembly goes in front to get the trigger assembly in, um, because of that little retaining bar, we have to put it in sideways and then turn it. And you'll feel that it's pressing on the plunger, so we know that's in the right place. Now we can advance this forward, the flipper thing. Um, behind that, we're gonna put the spring. Is that my imagination? Behind yeah. that, we're gonna go with the with this piece, um, I'm going to make sure we put a little, oh no, Tom, you've already put lube on all of those parts. So we'll put that in okay. behind there. Tighten that back up. You're going to screw that in until it stops. Right there, just, just firm. And then we're gonna put the needle back. This is 
you want to be careful in doing this. We want to make sure that the needle goes in straight and without resistance. If you feel any resistance, stop. Um, the point of that needle is very, very, very fine, very precise. Um, I do like to be able to see the needle protrude through the end so you can see it's in place. Like that. Ooh, that's cool. Then we'll put the little retaining screw on the back here. Put it back together. We know the needle is all the way through. It should come through. You'll feel it stop um, as it as you push it through. Don't force it through. You, if you force this through too far, um, you'll damage the, the cone. Mm -hmm. And then I, I want it. It's almost a $40 piece. Yes. Um, we'll put the cap pack on the front. And the handle back on the back. And work on, work on like a terry cloth towel or something that if you drop these tiny pieces that they don't bounce on the floor because they really are hard to they find. They are hard to find. So Dirk says what's happening on his dual action pache while painting the paint is in the cup is bubbling. Um, my thinking is if the, if the cup is bubbling, that means that something's clogged up right here. So typically I would take these pieces off. I would clean, Pache has a little bit different type of a cone in there. I would clean that good. I'd pull the needle out, clean that, but it could well be paint build up around here. That happens oftentimes with all of our airbrushes. If the paint builds up around the inside of the, you know, funnel out here, um, that will sometimes do it. But if, if it's bubbling back into the cup, something's clogged between the cup and the end. And what would be your next step? Let's say a good cleaning doesn't help your airbrush. What's your next step? Call Mandy at 1-800-FIND-AN <laughs> AIRBRUSH and she will fix you up. Um, usually it will, but you're going to have some parts that yes. may need to be replaced. Yeah. There's only certain things um, that can go wrong. I mean, it can get to be an extensive fix too, but uh, only certain, certain things will lead you to, you know, the real, real problem. Um, this is a nice little um, airbrush cleaning set that we carry. Um, I was looking at when Brett was doing, sh telling you about the kit needs, the needle needs to protrude. Um, I mean, this has a light. It's got two different magnifications in it. This is just in a fix-it set, um, just a cleaning tight. Um, we got, got instructions, complete instructions. We got airbrush cleaner. We've got little pipe cleaners. We got a. A cleanup brush, like I said, I thought was very important. Um, there's micro little tools in here. Here's a look at look at this wrench compared to the ones that we have. Look at that little wrench for taking your. Oh, off. that's. I yeah. want a nozzle wrench. I like that. That's a good that's, product. I like that. I like Studio that wipes, your magnifier, LED. Oh, that's, that's a nice set. Nice. That's a real nice set. Twenty-five dollars. Um, that's a deal. Yeah. Um. So go through your airbrush, inspect it with um, magnification, look for damage to the fluid nozzle, look for a bent needle, and what if you find a bent needle? Well, this, here, just do this. We got this airbrush in, and oof, you're going to do it. We're going to do the real thing. Oh my gosh. You know you're not supposed to do this stuff. On live TV, right. yes. Okay. Now, first of all, I just had a note. Um, when we were in New Zealand, um, um, we talked to Mark Walker over there, and he wanted to know if he could send me his airbrushes. He's got two Iwatas that do not work. And he said, uh, um, just from, you know, kind of not taking care of them and, and letting them get dirty and things like that, they're just, he can't get them going again. Um, I said, I can take them or you can send them and I will do what I can, but I'm not a service station for airbrushes. I can get things, I can get Disclaimer, you back. Disclaimer, Matuska Taxidermy does not take <laughs> airbrushes <laughs> to <laughs> fix or repair. Anyway, I said, you know, I have had a lot of people send their airbrushes direct to Iwata I and they that. are super about getting them Outstanding. going again. I mean, but if it's, you know, they're going to charge you for the parts. They're going to charge you for a little bit of cleaning and things like that. But And Pache as well. And Pache also. And probably, I'm sure, Badger too. 
But um, anyway, I just got a note from him yesterday that said, thanks so much, I got my airbrushes back from I want already, yeah. already clean. Um, I do that before I compete. I'll send my airbrush in and just have it gone through top to bottom. So um, it's all possible. Every yeah. time? I have to. Huh. This person sends us airbrush um, and it says, Teresa, um, we spoke on the phone about my airbrush that I dropped. I love it when people fess up right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> um, cannot uh, do small patterns on my um, fish. Please repair um, ASAP. I have two other airbrushes, but don't like. This is the best. Call when complete. Who's it from? ASAP. Who's it from? I just. Oh, we're not going to put anybody on the spot. Like we're that. not? No. Okay, let's go to the first thing dropping your airbrush. What is the cheapest insurance you could possibly get for that? The cheapest insurance is a little airbrush holder like this. Your airbrush sits in there like that. You trip over the cord, it's not going anywhere, it's and secure. And how much are these things? These are like very inexpensive and it's like the most important thing we have. It is. It is. This is a... fourteen ninety five. This is a better part of $300 um, for yeah. Bucks. And that hanger actually holds four airbrushes. Sure. Yeah. That's for fourteen ninety five. Yeah. And I can't tell you how much we rely on it more than the cost of it. Although it would be sad to damage it just to have it out of commission for an hour mm -hmm. is is time lost in the taxidermy shop. This will save you time and money. Okay, we'll gang up on this airbrush um, now. From um, just just looking at it, I can see it's. It's dented and scratched up on the tip, so it's been dropped. You can see it's been dropped. Now, normally what I'll do is I will put on my magnifying visor and I will look at the, at the needle and at the tip, but I don't have to um, because I can see it with my bare eyes, or you can use even cheaters. Um, you won't be able to see it on a little... Try it. Facebook we can line. focus it if you hold it close. Let me take the needle out first. We'll clean it up. It's got a lot of paint on it first, and then maybe you can see. But another thing that I've noticed with this one, because I did take it apart to see what we were going to be into, is this has a bent needle. Now, just a minute. It, it kinks over to this side. I'm not sure you Closer. can see it. Hold it there. I'm gonna twist it a little bit for you. It's not as bad as some of them I kinked for you before. But feel that. And you can, a lot of times what I'll do is drag it on my pants and it, it snags right here. I can tell where it snags. Like a nail. Now that's very, very minor. It's such a tiny little kink but it's enough that it's going to catch paint. Yep. And you'll have, so you'll have buildup behind that little burr. So now, um, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this, but anytime you put a bent needle through a fluid nozzle, you're probably going to oblong the hole in the fluid nozzle, almost always. So, Here's what we're going to do for this person. Here. I have. Hmm? Oh, you can see it scratching the paper? Well, you can hear it. Well, so it's all smooth. Smooth. Oh, I can hear it. Hear it scratch? Yeah. Okay. I can. I don't know I if don't the know camera will pick it up. I got this person, he's for sure it's going to need a new fluid nozzle, okay? Can you put that in for him? I can. I'd love to use that new little eye water wrench to do that. Um, oh, here. Use the nozzle wrench right here. You don't want to use the fancy one? Well, I, I would if I can use that. Since you can't sell it. I know. <laughs> we I could give it away at the end. Okay. Ooh. Want to do that? Sure. Sure. Here. So this is the little wrench that comes with it. Make sure you like and share. We're going to be giving away this Iwata cleaning kit. Slightly used. Slightly used. And we'll put the parts back in. Yes? Sure. Of course. 
It's free. We can do whatever we want. Nice scissors. Those are the best scissors ever. There you go. We'll even give you the empty right. package that goes with it. So that is just going to fit right over top of that fluid nozzle. It has two flat spots on either side. Making sure I do this right. Like that. There we go. Bad one's out. Bad one is out. Okay. How do you know it's bad? Because the needle was shoved through it and it will be It'll be slightly flared around. on the end, um, and so small that that we can we can barely see it. But it is it is bent right there. Okay, you ready for the new one? There's the new one. Oh my gosh! I know. Don't drop it. What if I drop it? Okay. While well, he's installing that, go ahead. How about we sharpen the needle? Mm -hmm. I think you should have Jacob hasn't seen it live before so let's have him feel it can you feel it come here <laughs> come here Jacob <laughs> okay the damage is on this edge right there mm -hmm. put your thumb right there and drag it yeah oh yeah feel it yeah you can see it tell the camera Jacob and say hi hi and <laughs> yeah you can feel it like that <laughs> like a hook a what like a hook Mandy has a hook. I do have a hook. Okay, so um, now normally you would buy a new um, needle at ooh, 10 to 20 dollars. Unless it's a custom micron needle, you're looking at about 60. Mm, 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 mm. But we have a needle sharpener, a needle repair tool from Sharpen Air, from Chad Elliott, from yep. Sharpen Air. Um, it's one of the better inventions that we've seen in the airbrush industry in a long time. And um, also a Matuska Taxidermy exclusive. Exclusive? We are so into exclusives. I love it. Um, in this little tool, they're, they're brand specific. So um, Iwata's fit, Badgers and Iwata's, Pache is a different one, correct? Yes, the Pache has a thicker needle, so it takes its own sharpener. And you have them in a pretty pastel pink, the hot green, and a black. And black I would lose by laying around, so I like the, the hot green. Uh, it has different holes, and the different holes are, um, we're going to start over here. Um, it's, it's a coarser stone. There's a stone in here which will straighten that needle. All you gotta do is twist it, um, I think it says 10 to 20 times. Twist it um, in the same direction, like clockwise. I'm gonna pull it out of there. The second one is a polish. I'm gonna put the needle back in that one, twist it again, and that's a polish. If your needles get really, really bad, um, there's a shoulder, and the shoulder of the needle is farther down the shaft, and I've never used the shoulder Rebevel ever, and I don't. I think I did a new needle before I had to do that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're they've gonna... done something to damage the shoulder. They've really done some damage. Rotate, rotator cuff. Yeah. We're gonna stick it in, and I'm gonna twist it to what I think is same direction, ten to twenty times. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on it, not a lot. Now it should pull in and out easily. It did not, so I'm gonna do it a little bit more. That was easier. And that hook is, is catching in there is why. Now it's, now it's pulling out real easy. That means that my hook is getting straightened. Now I'm gonna put it in the um, polish. 10 to 20 times. That's how easy this is, it works every time and then we're going to feel it you skipped two you didn't still you feel it huh didn't you skip two uh those are for shoulders we don't need to do oh. the shoulders now come here tell me if you can feel it oh 
Magic? Yeah. Okay, put that together. Let me see your finger, we'll see if it's sharp. Um, so we've got the fluid nozzle back in, we've got the cap over the front, so we've got a new fluid nozzle installed here. See newly straightened needle through. I can feel just a little resistance. That's perfect. See the needle protrude. Tighten it down. And the cap was right here. This one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Want a new one? Yeah. I got it. That. Hand me your scissors. So you can see this one's been dropped. Um, Which was clearly admitted. You can see the damage here, and doesn't seem like a big deal, but that will, if you paint with this cap on, which is a protective cap, you paint with that on, it will gather paint around that burr from, have, from it having been dropped. Okay, and there is a brand new sparkly clean one. So we will put that on the front. Now I'm gonna give you give a little, uh, I want oh, a nipple here to put on that airbrush and we're gonna test it. Oh my gosh. So the proof is really... Should have done it before. Okay. I think we probably should have pre-done this. <laughs> um. That's it. All right, so here's our quick connect. We're gonna now you're gonna quick connect a, on. A cup, aren't you? Yes, I will need a color cup. This is a, this is a Psycho P. Um, and incidentally, the Pache um, color cups will fit the, the Iwata siphon. Put that on. Turn down. Um, this is very clean. This is a BL color cup, right? That's a BL color cup that works for the Iwata. So I'm going to turn the air pressure down. We've got some of our light tone paint pre-mixed in a bottle. This is, you know, we talked about this being a primer for the big show and getting your airbrush ready. Um, paint is another thing. As much a tool as your airbrush is, so is your paint. And Having fresh, clean, and thin paint is very important. We like to mix, pre-mix our paint into little four, six, and eight ounce color bottles. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint in there and see what happens. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's pretty precise right there. So if we really want to get close, I'll take the cap off. Cannot Don't do small it. patterns on my fish. Land, you're going to be able to do it now. Oh, baby. Steven Bond oh. says, getting one of those sharpeners for sure. You will um, not be disappointed. They really, really work. Um, and what are they? They're 30 something, are they? $30, 30 Yeah, maybe 36 um, I just, that was a, probably a $12 airbrush, and you do that three times, it's paid for. And they last forever, you're not gonna wear this thing out. Well, 44, best, sorry, 44.95. The best part of having that is it's a tool in your shop, and should you be procrastinating. In the middle of a competition. Have, yeah, and not have time to send your airbrush in, or order new parts, um, this will save you in 15 minutes time you can be up and running again. And, and that's four needles. You can't basically. get much more detailed than that. And we can do a nice wide spray still. Douglas Montgomery says, I just tuned in, will that sharpener straighten out a bent needle? Depends, Douglas. How bent How are bent? we <laughs> talking? And, uh, um, yes, that needle was bent. It was kinked off to the side. Um, I've taken them before for our live videos on Thursdays and I bent them majorly and bent them and straightened it out. Um, these also, these little stones in here, um, if you watch the tutorial, um, you can switch them around. If you ever use it so much that it doesn't seem to be doing the job, 
um, you can take the screws out of this, take it apart, flip the stones 180 degrees, oh. and use them again. Uh, but I can't imagine ever even wearing them out the first time. You'd have to sharpen a lot of needles. Um, needles are also um, polished. They um, need to be polished. And even after you take them out of this, um, you can polish them. They send you a little polishing pad like mm -hmm. this or your steel wool. But uh, that's a huge money savings right there. Jerry Morris wants to know, in your opinion, what's the best style of airbrush, gravity fed or bottom cup? What make do you prefer? I always used siphon feed, the bottom. And my thinking, the, one of the first airbrushes I ever got was the C cup. Mm -hmm. Thinking that the gravity weight of that paint going down has to paint better. Um, it doesn't seem to, this airbrush seems to work exceptionally well with the air coming through there. You possibly need a little bit more air pressure. We like to paint. When you were painting, what were you painting with here? Probably five to, oh, you know, five to um, ten. <laughs> it looks like, um, didn't have it down too far. It looks like it was about 15. 15, but we'll a lot of times paint five to 10 PSI, yeah. seven, eight PSI. Um, I think you might need a little more than that in the siphon feeds. Yeah. But if you want really exceptional detail, you're going to want very thin paint and you're going to want to turn your air pressure down to five to seven. You know, and, and just having not used the BC in a long time, this is a very different feel. Um, and every airbrush is going to feel different to different people. The reason that I ended up with the custom micron is because it didn't fit someone else's hand. Yeah, and so he didn't use it. It just sat around in his toolbox, and so. Um, so when you go to shows, pick them up and feel them. They're a lot like ballpoint pens. You'll know if you pick up a ballpoint pen. I don't like it. It's too big in my hand. It's too little. I got big hands. You'll know what what feels good to you. Very um, important, and we usually have um, at the bigger shows. We'll have several airbrushes that they can mm -hmm. handle and. And, uh, and play with in so. any of the, sh you know, like Pache at the World Show, they'll have a booth yeah. probably, and yeah. Iwata will have a booth, and you can go yeah. there and they can actually play with the with the airbrushes. And we'll have our sharpeners out and playing with them. Your air compressor is very quiet when it's on. Which one are you using? We won that, didn't we? Yeah, this is an Iwata compressor. Yes, it's quiet. Um, it's very quiet. Um, there are several different. Um, small compressors. This is just one of our portable ones. We can also, um, back here at the paint table, um, Tom has the whole shop plumbed with air. So we could plug in anywhere back there and the girls have to listen to it downstairs. Yeah. yeah. And we don't have to listen to it up here. Um, but that's another, that's another option to, to quieting your, your airbrush. Also, um, I know that some small compressors you can get an intake, um, filter for muffler oh, yeah um, yeah a little muffler um and it will help quiet some of those um that's okay what'd you just file. put in there we're putting this brand new little back. piece oh, that we took out of the package i thought cool. you put the old broken <laughs> oh, we'll even give you this so you know where it came from <laughs> and then you're going to give this away right yeah make sure you like and share we're picking we have one winner from last week but if they are not watching live it will go to somebody here one slightly used part one slightly used part um, um. But what else do we have to talk about? Rob was saying that another Thursday and another snowstorm, and we are in a little bit of an ice yeah. storm here. Uh, yeah, show how that works. Oh, um, this is how we do a lot of our painting. Um, like Brett said, we put our paint in bottles like this. You squeeze it, suck out the excess paint. Didn't waste any. Um, hand me some thinner and I'll clean this little airbrush out for this guy. You know, another, just another quick tip for um, you guys that are painting and maybe experiencing difficulties. Um, we get, we get to work with quite a few beginners and students and one of the things I've noticed in, in recent classes is the tendency for students to, uh, using a double action airbrush for the first time, pull the trigger back before they have airflow. And what will happen is if, if you pull the trigger back 
on a double, let me demonstrate. If you, you pull the trigger back before you depress the trigger, you that will allow paint to flow to the front. And then as soon as you push the trigger down, it will have to push all of that excess paint out. And so you'll get a paint splatter. So if you're just learning, try to get in the habit of pushing down to get airflow first and then pulling back. Um, just a quick tip. Well, people, we actually are still on our iPhone, John Blucci, but we do have a mic set up, and if it's not working, we will look at the Bluetooth one oh next week. I'll try to get it going for you guys, but it should be a little better. Um, Joe Martin says that I won my Sharpen Air here on Matuska last year. Oh, wow. So, let's see. I do have something fun from Sean Conanwetter. I love what you guys do with your videos, personalities, and customer service. Mackenzie used to be my main supplier, and I feel they have gotten too big. I was looking for a good quality, We're dependent supplier. I think I found what I was looking for, and the kind people at Matuska is just a bonus. Keep up the good work. Someday I would like to meet the Matuska team personally. Come visit us, Sean. We live in a little oasis in Iowa, and it's a great place to visit. So pick up your supplies and come visit. Um, one of the things before we pick our winner, well, let's tell them. Jeff Metley, you are the winner from last week's shares. Make sure that you guys like and share. Related to you? It's my dad. Really? <laughs> it's your dad? Yeah. No way. That's it's funny. Crazy. You better it's hope that he's walking right now. You better tag <laughs> no, he shared like five times, so he had five <laughs> chances. <laughs> Um, insider trading, insider trading. Yeah, that's funny. So let's see if he's watching you live. Yeah, probably not. Comment yeah, in if you are watching. Otherwise, we'll pick a live viewer here. So make sure you let us know that you're sharing it. There's no texting him. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell let's us about that. talk about your master's plan because you guys are getting hit with a lot of oh, questions about my this. Oh, gosh. Have we made a lot of this? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and had a lot of questions about it, but it sure. seems to be going over very well. Um, had some real positive feedback, um, and we've used it in the shop with a lot of success. Um, new and improved. So much so that we now offer it in a new color. Um, Puddle Duck Flesh is the one we carry now, and Diver Base Gray is our ooh, new one. Fancy. So and why? Why the two colors? Um, just because um, we used to have white and white was a color um, you injected into the bird feet and it was nice to have some kind of a base to start with something light. Um, the flesh was a little additive because it added a flesh where your scaled portions came together and it would actually, um, kind of like painting the, a deer's nose flesh and then wiping it off so the, the pores and the cells have a little fleshy membrane between. Um, people ask for um, a diver color, and so we have a, it's kind of a light gray, it's kind of a neutral gray, and we have a natural flesh. So it makes painting the bird fit foot much, much easier. Um, the diver base gray I have not put online yet, so you would have to call and talk to Dawn, our friendly phone person, but talk to, <laughs> I know, I'll leave her a message on her desk. <laughs> she actually usually watches. I did, it makes, it's, they're light colors, they're not dark colors, it's not going to turn your, your foot pink, 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 and it's not going to turn your foot dark gray, it's just a nice base within the, it, it's kind of a lifelike base color, deep inside, gives you a lot of depth. Let's, mm -hmm. ah, Sean was watching, thanks for the kind words, Sean. Um, let's talk about the odor. Compared Hardly to Master's Blend. Hardly any odor. It's very, very low, low, low odor. And now you'll notice we are using the Master's Blend name. The original Master's Blend is not coming back. We've talked to the guy who had the name of Master's Blend, and he told us that to use it and go for it, and we've been working with him. Um, so the original Master's Blend isn't coming back. They can't get some of the stuff to mix it. So what we've done is we've kind of found out what's in it, what it was, this and that, and we've come up with ours and we've tried to better it, basically. Um, thickness, what's the thickness compared to Master's Blend? I think it's as good or better. 
yeah. um, than master's plan. And we use it through an insulin syringe. Um, the set time in it, I would say you have probably three to four minutes yep. for At sure, um, mm -hmm. which I think is a little bit better than master's plan. If you want to slow that down, you can put it in the refrigerator or the freezer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to thicken in the freezer. Um, we have also, if, if uh, you think it's too thick, you can put a couple drops of lacquer thinner, acetone in it, um, but it goes through an insulin syringe. That's a tiny syringe, I'm guessing 26 gauge needle or smaller, um, goes through very well for us. And we sell them both in the eight ounce, and the eight ounce is 24, 25, but that lasts a long time, right? Yeah, you're gonna get a lot of heat. You will waste out of this. more than you use, yes. probably. Um, and you know these color options, um, the diver gray, it's kind of neat to use it with some of our alternative paint methods. Um, we've got a lot of people that are using pan pastels lately, and to start with a dark base on those diver feet and then highlight the high spots of the scales with a lighter, um, like the pan pastel, touch it with touch the scales with a light gray, um, gives a real neat contrasting effect. So that was kind of the thinking behind of that, that tiger gray. So there you have it. What else you got for us? Um, Jig and Jim wants to know, what's a good practice item for painting on? Fish. A good practice item. Um, like what to paint on? Other than paper? I'm say paint some abs on somebody. We actually have, uh, we actually, we've done tattoos and things like that. Um, we actually have for the students Give me a paper back. patterns that look like little yeah. colored, you know, I mean like, like a little kid would color on. Um, and we have the students paint paper before we ever let them start on a fish. Uh, maybe a half cast reproduction. Because they can wipe those off. And we do have those. We take those to the show sometimes. We'll have a... Uh, uh, half of a fish, you know, and they're fish that we made reproductions in the shop and that uh, we can take them the, and uh, whoever wants to try with an airbrush or something like that can actually play on the scales and see what kind of effects they get. What's the shelf life on your master's blend? Oh, I'd say if you keep the lids on, you know what I'd probably even do? I'd put um, Teflon tape or something on them just so they come apart because if you don't get them tightened down, um, I suppose, I don't know what the term is, oxidized or whatever, and you get crumbles around the top, I'd say you've got in excess of eight months to a year if you keep I them so. closed yeah. tight. So when air gets into them, it cuts down your time. Jen Nikelski is watching. Jen, I better see you at the world show, lady. Um, all right, so I have not heard from your dad, Jeff, so we're going to give it to a live viewer oh, if you want to no. pick a number That's for me. That's why you texted him. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could pick me out a number. Okay, we always have to do that. Okay, look around the side here. Okay. Oh, well. That's pretty obvious. So you just use one, one hand. hand. Oh. <laughs> Five guesses. Right. Here, I'll face it this way. Pick it. All right, oh, Jacob. Give me a number one through fifty. One bad hand. One through thirty. One through thirty. People, start guessing numbers one through thirty. Don't think so hard. And while they are guessing, but wait. Let's what? There's more. Let's talk slow for his dad. Hey. While they're guessing a number one through 30, let's address the elephant in the room. Dan Hudsick and Blake are asking what happened to Tom's arm. That's not an elephant. Well, you didn't address <laughs> it. it looked, it's pretty obvious. I had a little nerve surgery on my elbow. And this is what they left me with. <laughs> it it looks like your Popeye and had some string. <laughs> looks like you had some spinach. Anyway, that's it. I think there's a lot of padding, I hope. Because if it's all swelling, I'm in trouble. But did so, they fix it? Do you think it's fixed? No. We might have to call him left. <laughs> it's all right. It's good. It's gonna it's Nobody's gonna be got it yet. fixed. Keep guessing one through thirty. <laughs> um, elephant in the room. <laughs> um Sean says he received his largemouth bass replica today. Very awesome quality, great detail. He'd be talking about the Lake Country one. Sure. Oh. Yep. 
and world shows coming up so we'll make sure if you're not going to the world show we'll make sure to keep you posted on everything going on i bet we're going to be live from there aren't we we're going to be live if you lot. go make sure you stop through we're going to have i mean i can't tell you how many specials there will be got it um giveaways um presenters um can't give too much away because we got some people that like to do what we do, so. Oh, so it's all secret. It's all secret until we get there. Yeah. <laughs> you better hope that horse kind of stays alive. <laughs> um, actually, no. Uh, Larry Wiggins got it, and he is a, is he's it? an avid, he's an avid, uh, follower every Thursday. Very good, very good. So congratulations, uh, Larry. You'll like it. That's, we will. That's one of the best deals we got with Supply Company. Get that. Anything else you guys have? You got this guy's airbrush cleaned on live? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, call Iwata or Pache or Badger yeah. if it doesn't work, um, not Matuska's. Uh, service department. Yeah, look at that. Um, we did it right here. Right back to you. Um, and any of the companies will. Yeah. Pache will, yeah. Badger will. And we'll have, yeah, we'll. Yeah, we'll have some airbrush stuff at the show. A little. Um, um, if we tell people to bring airbrushes to the show, we'll do that. Clean an airbrush. Yeah. Uh, that's a great long. idea. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. That's we a great idea. I don't like some of your great ideas. <laughs> I'll talk about it tomorrow with them. <laughs> um, don't forget Sharpen Air, best yeah. tool in the airbrush industry. Yeah, if right you're now. doing your competition work right now or thinking about doing it in the next week or two, um, I would next. Your next order, I would make sure and have a sharpen air just because. I've tried straightening the needles on my pants oh, and feel them, feel them, scrape them on something. It's the worst not. thing to be up at one o'clock in the morning yeah. and drop that air. It's bench. basically the price of four needles. So dropping it four times, bending it four times. That's but it's God. priceless because you can repair your needle instantly. No yeah. downtime. So thanks for everybody for tuning in. Remember to like and share for next week's. Giveaway, do you guys know what live you're doing next week? Oh my gosh. You know, you're, that's a long ways. It is, I know. We're kind of going day by day here with this world show. But um, we'll let you know as it comes. And give us a call, 1-800-488-3256. Talk to Dawn about the Master's Blend try if you're interested it, in that. Try it, love it. Um, we use it all the time. Or visit us online at www.matuskataxrumi.com. All the products they talked about here today, you can find on our website under the Facebook Live featured products. It's an easy tab that showcases everything. So thanks for tuning in, and Thank we will everybody. catch you guys next week.